Today, we are going to take apart and reassemble a computer. To remove the door, pull back on the slide lock on top of the box. The door should release, exposing the computer. A quick health and safety warning before we begin. This right here is the power supply. Its job is to convert the 110 AC voltage coming from the wall into the 5 to 1.5 DC voltage used by the computer. These can wear out, and you can remove them and replace them. But you should never, ever open them. There are two capacitors inside. These basically hold the electricity to run the computer. One of them would hurt you if you were to grab it. But grabbing both capacitors could actually stop your heart. So remember, you can remove the power supply. You can replace the power supply, but do not open the power supply. This is the hard drive. To remove it, press down firmly on the two blue tabs while lifting up on the connected cables. The multicolored ribbon is the power connection. The blue cable is the data. If you look very closely, you can see that both cables will only go in one way due to the L shape of the connection. This is a magnetic platter drive. Inside basically looks like a record player with an arm that slides back and forth. Magnetic platter drives are electromechanical devices. There is a high chance it will fail at some point. The other type of drive you may have heard of is an SSD drive. A big difference between SSD drives and magnetic platter drives is that you can recover data from a failed magnetic platter drive. If an SSD drive fails, that data is not recoverable. It is gone forever. The area that the hard drive was resting in is the hard drive cradle. To extract the cradle, squeeze the two blue tabs and lift up. Below is the cable for the fan, which we can also disconnect. This is the optical drive. To remove it, first disconnect the power and then the data cables. Set those wires aside. Raise up on the popper tab before sliding the drive back from the box. This is a modular system, so the drive can be upgraded from this compact disc reader to a Blu-ray reader. The optical drive is also an electromechanical device which can fail. In order to get a disc out of a failed drive, insert a paper clip into this small hole on the face of the drive. Next is the heat sink. Use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two screws on either side of the heat sink. The heat sink is on a rocker, so it will tilt up and out of the box. Hidden below is the CPU. The heat sink basically pulls heat from the CPU. As the CPU begins to heat up, the heat is drawn to this copper plate. From the copper plate, the heat is further extracted to this metal tube. And from the metal tube to these fins. The fan on the side of the box then blows room temperature air across the fins. A quick health and safety warning about the CPU and the copper plate. The gray goo is actually thermal paste. It is fairly safe, but in older machines that paste may contain mercury. After finishing this activity, make sure to wash your hands, especially if you're working with an older machine. The CPU is housed in the CPU socket. To get the CPU out, press down on the J-click 
pull back and then open the trap door. The CPU can then be removed. People incorrectly call this the brains of the computer. It is less a brain and more of a calculator. It processes numbers extremely well and extremely fast. Different processors are used for different things. If you play a lot of video games, you'll need a very powerful processor, as opposed to a less powerful CPU for only checking emails or basic computer functions. Decide what your main use is, and then you can figure out what kind of processor is needed. You just have to make sure that the CPU and the CPU socket are compatible. Looking closely, you'll notice that there is a missing pin. And the same is true of the socket. These must match. When reinstalling, the missing pin of the processor lines up with the missing pin of the socket. Next is RAM. To get the RAM out, press these two white tabs very firmly and the RAM will pop out. Programs, including your operating system, are loaded onto the RAM. RAM is the computer's main memory and is temporary and volatile, meaning that when the computer loses power, RAM will lose all the information it is storing inside of it. You'll notice there is a notch cut into the RAM while there is a tab down in the dim slot. These must line up when reinstalling, meaning they will only fit one way. You may have to apply a bit of pressure when putting back in place. Don't worry, you won't break it. Last is the graphics card. I'm going to set this aside for a minute and show you a motherboard removed from the box. This is better to show you the graphics card, so don't worry about removing the whole motherboard from your box. The graphics card's job is to convert whatever math the processor is doing into something you can see on your screen via video connection. Now we can put everything back together. Start with the heat sink. Place the hinge side first before lowering down into the screw holes. Do not over tighten as it could strip the screws or damage the motherboard itself. Give it a shake to make sure it doesn't rattle or wiggle and the heat sink is back in place. Next is the optical drive. Reconnect the power and data cables first. Remember, they can only connect in one way. Be careful when placing the drive in. You should only need a small amount of force to lock the drive in place. Onto the hard drive cradle. Reconnect the power cable first. Place the hinge into the tab on the side and firmly click the cradle back into place. Now the hard drive. Replace the power and the data cables. Once again, they can only connect one way with the L connectors. Place the side near the bottom of the box in first. Notice the pins inside the cradle. And press down firmly until it locks into place. Lastly is the door. There are three holes on the door and three tabs on the box to create a hinge. The toothy part at the top is how the lock engages.
And that is your computer.